Welcome to Metaburst 1. The topic for today is Metacognition 101. At the end of this Metaburst, you will be able to describe what metacognition is, share a few examples of strong and poor metacognitive behaviors, and reflect on ways to increase your metacognition. So what is metacognition? Well, simply put, metacognition is the ability to think about your own thinking, about cognition. It's you being consciously aware of yourself as a problem solver, being able to monitor and control your own mental processing, and being aware of the type of learner you are and the type of learning that you're doing. Metacognition is broken down into two categories, knowledge of thinking and regulation of thinking. Under knowledge of thinking, it's knowing the right strategy, knowing how to apply that strategy, and knowing when to utilize it. When you're regulating your thinking, you're able to plan, regulate, monitor, and evaluate um, your thinking process. Uh, under planning, you might be asking yourself questions like, what am I supposed to learn? Um, what do I know about this topic? What do I do first? And as you are then preparing and studying that information, you're able to assess how much more you need to do. Do you really know what you know or what you think you know? And um, under evaluation, when you've taken an assessment, for example, you go back and you reflect on how well you studied. Um, did you really do or know what you thought you knew? Questions to that effect. So why is metacognition valuable? Well, extensive research indicates that metacognition can be learned and that when you learn how to learn and how to think, you can achieve higher academic levels. Numerous cognitive studies and brain-based teaching experts also suggest that learning metacognitive strategies help you to drive your brain. So you're in the driver's seat you use self-regulatory attributes such as monitoring, self-evaluation, self-assessment, and self-teaching. And it's also been found that the biggest effect on student learning occurs when you become your own teachers, when you're able to really explain the content and information to somebody, to teach it to somebody else. Um, you impact your learning at the greatest level. Also, it's important to know that when you struggle with learning, it's not because you can't learn it, it's just because you need more practice and more instru instructional support. And just knowing this in itself is metacognition. So what are some examples of poor metacognition? I'm sure at some point in time, all of us have done this before. You think you've mastered a concept, and then you stop and end your study session prematurely. Another example of poor metacognition will be to be overconfident when taking a test. And then when you get your score back, you're sitting there wondering, how could I have done so poorly? I thought I knew what I was talking about. A uh, third example would be when you look at that material that you need to learn so for so long that you develop this false illusion that you really do know it, but in fact you don't. And finally, when you don't recite that information and retrieve it enough, um, or you don't teach it to somebody else um, so that it becomes a part of your long-term memory and you really do learn it. Those are just some examples of poor metacognition. What I'd like for you to do is think about some behaviors that you already are utilizing um, or that there are behaviors that you can change to help you increase your metacognition. Take a few moments and jot that down and share with others. So what are you waiting for? Get moving with metacognition.